thanks all of you for uh, joining us. I think it's uh, it's wonderful to have uh, so many people uh, interested in the in the president's appeal. So um, I am Marit, Marit Verhoof Cohen. I'm the president of Shropton's International, and my big assistant. Uh, she's not sitting next to me, although she it feels like she's sitting next to me. Is Hafdis Kalsdottir, and she is the SIADA and the chair of the President's Appeal, uh, Women, Water, and Leadership. So together we will have this presentation and um, we also have uh, four representatives uh, that Haftis works for and they are the representatives of the Federation. I know that uh, um, Saina is, um, Saina is, is uh, present here and uh, we are working hard on the five projects to get them off the ground and it's not an easy task but uh, with your support I'm sure we'll get there. So I'll put my microphone, my uh, camera off and uh, go through the um, through the slides but there is one thing that uh, we have uh, two points where you can ask questions first we're going to explain a little bit about uh, si how it works what the president's appeal is because we have noticed that it's not completely clear and uh, clear and that is why uh, we have a, a short session where you can ask questions then we go to the projects and after all the projects we can you can ask questions again and then we go to the end and there of course you have uh, more questions to ask so i hope you'll enjoy it and um off uh, off we are uh first of all why are we having the webinar on the president's appeal again this year because that is uh, the second time SI's role is to connect the four federations. It's good communication with these federations and their representatives and of course the membership. We are really happy that you're joining us for this webinar and showing interest. It is only because of you that we have been able to implement such a lot and you can see later and hear about the, what we have done uh, in this webinar. SI is responsible for our international exposure and to make our voice heard at an international level. That is mainly being done at UN level through our representatives at the UN by our advocacy director, Beth Bukur, together with the help of Catherine Dunmore. She is the brand new advocacy manager at SIHQ in Cambridge. She started last Monday and by the SI International President, of course. One of the instruments we have to make our voice heard to the outside world, uh, as well as to the membership, is the President's Appeal, our international project. With the SI Appeal, Women, Water and Leadership, we see to it that we educate, empower and enable women and girls at the same time this unites Soroptimists across the globe as a global voice for women, increasing awareness of the vital role of women and girls that they have to play as equal partners, as agents of change at all levels, from the ground level to the designing table to the decision-making scenes. So to make it all a bit clearer, I think it would be great if Haftis would explain a little bit more about the history of the President's Appeal. Haftis, it's yours. Thank you, Marit, and good morning and afternoon to you all. It's a pleasure to be with you. The UN recognizes 10th of December as Human Rights Day, and Suroptimist have since 1956 recognized the date as Suroptimist International Day. And since 1981, Sir Optimist donated to the International President's Appeal Day on 10th of December. And since 1975, you can tell I love figures. Since 1975, we had quadrennial projects where Sir Optimist donated money to the project, but the partnering organizations such as the Red Cross or Hopes and Homes, they managed the project and got all the credit for it. But in, during the SI convention in Montreal in 2011, 
it was decided not to have any more quadrennial projects, but a focus on a theme, educate to lead, until 2021, when we will celebrate our 100th anniversary. So now, Serb to Mr. Worldwide, they support only one international project, the President's Appeal. This is the only project where all Serb to Mr. join hands for the better of women and girls, no matter this federation, union, or region, or club they belong to. And that is what links us together. And now Marit will explain why we are focusing on this, on, on the SDGs and how they link into our projects. Thank you very much, Haftis. And this is my um, uh, sort of um, main thing why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing these projects, because Sir Optimist International has a general status at the UN, which means that we work very closely with the United Nations and follow their goals and activities. Together with the seven UN centers, where we have SIUN representatives, and these UN centers are in Paris, Rome, Geneva, Vienna, Nairobi, New York, and since this year in Bangkok. We are working to implement the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As you know, there are 17 SDGs, and we need to implement these 17 by 2030, which is not that long ago, that long from here. And that is why we also talk about the 230 Agenda. SI is particular focusing on three of the 17 SDGs. Why only three? Because these three SDGs are directly linked to all other SDGs. And if we have implemented these three SDGs in about 12 years, we probably have achieved the implementation of most of the 17 SDGs. The focus of SI is on SDG 4, you know it all, quality education. SDG 5, our main objective, gender equality and empowerment of women. And SDG 6, because it's so important for women, water for all, for all purposes. And this means not only water pumps, it also means wastewater, sanitation, transboundary waters, climate change. So all organizations within the UN, all NGOs, CSOs, governments, university, research centers, the private sector, industries, realize that water is the most expensive and important commodity. You might ask why? Well, most of us get water whenever opening the tap and water scarcity is an unknown and maybe even strange phenomenon for us. By 2050, the world's population will grow to 9.7 billion people. These people have to be fed. If you want to feed the people, you need water. And according to a recent UN report on the state of the world's water, more than 5 billion people could suffer water shortage. This is water scarcity. By 2050, and is all due to climate change, increased demand of these 9.7 billion and polluted supplies. Drought threatens all people globally and hampers efforts to reach SDG 1, just to show you that there are more SDGs, which is focusing on elimination of poverty, and SDG 2, zero hunger. So I'll now stop on my SDG uh, horse and go to water and why I'm so passionate about water and women. Fresh water is necessary for the survival of all living organisms on Earth. Our body are made of 60% uh, water, and we cannot survive more than a few days if we wouldn't have water. Safe, accessible water is crucial to per, uh, preserving life. In many countries, securing water is a daily fight for survival, and especially for women. In over 70% of the households where water must be fetched, women and girls are still burdened with the responsibility. 
evidence shows that time spent fetching water translates in loss of income and loss of schooling. And guess what? Mainly for women and girls. Investment in safe drinking water and sanitation have paved a path to economic growth, again for women. Such investments have high rates of return. For each dollar invested, the World Health Organization, WHO, estimates a return to be 3 to 34 fold. Excess to water determines the way in which individuals and communities plan, how they envisage and shape their future. And women's contribution and leadership is increasingly important in this process. Their expertise, knowledge and experience of these women, if harnessed through vocational training, education and empowerment, can position women as effective leaders. Our aim is to raise a minimum of £350 over the two years that we support five projects on five continents. The projects will empower at least 500 women to be self-supporting through implementing water-based projects and a minimum of 100 women will be enabled and educated to take on leadership. Safe water and sanitation infrastructures will be maintained through vocational training and access to technology for women will be provided. So before we introduce the three projects, I now would like to ask you uh, if you have uh, any, any questions. Feel free, uh, if there is anything, I'll give the floor to uh, Yvonne. Um, if not, we'll just continue. Okay, so um, thanks, Marit. Um, the only, we've had a problem with one person, uh, Nisha cannot connect. So uh, the question is about the, uh, the presentation and I you know if you'd like to tell them what is going to happen with the PowerPoint and the recording afterwards. Well Yvonne is recording uh, this whole uh, session so when that is done she will send it to um, to HQ in Cambridge and Sarah will uh, on Tuesday will start making that uh, recording and send it uh, on our website and send it out to everyone. The, president, uh, the, the, the presentation will be on the website and if you want our text, then uh, we'll add the text to it and send that out as well. So it is, uh, you can listen to it again, you can see the presentation and use the presentation again, and uh, you can um, read the text. So everything will be available. Okay, the other, the other question is, um, yes, they, they want the text and the PowerPoint and the recording, so that will all be available, thank you. And um, a question from Katrine is, are there Soroptimus clubs involved in the countries where the projects take place? Yes, and we'll get to that <clears throat> when we are explaining the, uh, the project. But what our goal when we started was, we want a project, and that is what Hafti said, up to now, we had a partner and the partner got all the credits. We also have partners. The partners give the expertise, but the Soroptimist clubs are involved and they will get the credit and they will uh, know what we're doing and they will uh, be very involved and be monitoring. So yes, the Soroptimist are involved. Okay, um, Katrine, did you did you want to? Oh, she's taken a hand down. That's good. Um, Marina wanted to ask a question. Marina, Marina, your microphone's um, unmuted. Yes, Mike. Hello. Yes. Hi. Go ahead, Marina. How, uh, uh, my question is uh, how to motivate uh, the, the clubs of the union. Okay. I think I think to motivate is really I mean we have four representatives from the four federations 
who uh, get all the information from Haftis, from uh, HQ. They are informed when there's something new on the website, when there are new videos, I, when I have done something. And they should really go to their regions and unions to actually explain that that has to be mentioned in the, in the clubs and in the unions. Um, uh, what, as you are present now, which is really great, maybe you can also uh, go to your union and say, listen, this is the, way, this is the PowerPoint, this is what we're doing, this is how it's explained. So maybe all of you, I mean, we're already over 35 now, um, can, um, can be ambassadors of this project. Excellent. Now we'll get the sun, the questions that are answered further along in the um, presentation, Marie. So I think maybe it's the time to do that because, okay. for example, Cheryl has asked how much has been raised, or well, that's further along. Yeah, in the it will, we'll come back. We'll come back to that. Okay. So the first president's appeal, as you can see on the screen now, is Kenya, where Optimist Union of Kenya is educated and empowering 500 women farmers, smallholder farmers. And did you know that 70% of the farmers in Kenya are subsistence farmers and that 60% of these smallholder farmers are women? So this project will ensure that the women smallholder farmers have the opportunity to learn new skills, technologies, and enable themselves and together with us to move from subsistence farming to commercial farming, breaking the cycle of poverty and benefiting both families, communities, and their uh, and their area and this, and themselves, of course. So we started with soil analysis that women were taught water saving practices. They were trained in how to plow, how to plant the appropriate seeds for their soil to yield uh, better crops. And they also got to learn irrigation techniques. The result of this training was huge. It was a huge increase, even three, four times the harvest and is the envy of the neighbors. So the women are very proud that they were participating because their yields, you will see it in the little film later, is, is incredible. It's really as if it's uh, in my own country, the Netherlands, where it rains all the time. So these smallholder farmers have enough for their families and not even that is the only, that's not the only thing, it's also enough for their communities and they can sell it on the markets. They have been taught how to sell their products and earn more money, which creates independence and enabling uh, possibilities. They now have had a, um, a training at the University of Egerton. And this university, I mean, you, I wish you all could see these women because we had uh, contact with them through Skype. And they live in huts and they work really hard and they are really, they feel that they are the, 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 the leaders of their community. But now they went to the university, they got all their own room, their own television, their own uh, toilet and, and um, shower. So they came back and I mean, now everyone in the area wants to, wants to join because they were so proud. is the service club for women and it was formed so that women professional women could have a network and talk together and just be sisters and help each other professionally organizations like Soroptimist and others are very important because Soroptimist links you from ground level all the way up to international level to policy level so for the for the people on the ground the women on the ground and the citizens to understand what the policy is all about and get their, their, their leaders accountable for. We raise awareness, we talk to the people, and we get to empower the woman on the ground. You don't have to be a teacher 
or a nurse because in the Africa those are the two jobs which were meant for women. We started working with Miti Mingi, uh, with the women of Miti Mingi, Muihoko Women Group. And this was a big project which was covering rainwater harvesting. As Muihoko, the area in Miti Mingi, the, the, water, the groundwater is very saline, it has a lot of salt. So it affects the bodies and the teeth. And the distance which the women took, it took about six hours to fetch water. When you go there, please stay with them. Learn what they're doing until you'll understand how a woman lives or a family lives on very basic things. They had problems with water, they had problems, they were on their own, they were not together, were not working together. So the area was really very different. When we came here in 2010, there were no roads. Even getting inside here was not, you couldn't come in here. A lot of things, you can see that the children are healthy, the women are healthy, because now they have water, they don't have to use the, the river water, which has a lot of fluoride, and their bones are getting weak. They have a training center. There's so much development after we've come here. So we are progressing with them, and Soropmis is part of the progress of the whole area. With everything we are doing here, the locals have to contribute so that they own it, and it is their idea. We have now three water tanks which are full of water. This area is water scarcity area, and they really have to collect a lot of rainwater. Sometimes we can even stay for three months, three years without rain. In this area, before the project, it was just a dusty land. For the past years, we never expected in this area to get vegetables like this one. The way they have taught us how to grow the seedlings and transplant them here, what we should use when planting and how we should weed them. We have seen now the land is of great benefit. We can see that we will not consume all of it. We are going to have money after harvesting. This is the land the women bought, two and a half acres. It's a demonstration land, and you can see the crop is doing very well. Uh, each one of the, the, the members have their own plants in their own farms, and their pineapples, their vegetables, their fruits, all kinds. We have introduced a lot of variety here, so that the local people here can realize that you can plant, you can get more out of this land. For me, it, it gives me personal satisfaction, empowering a woman and making sure a whole community is empowered, and for me also. I have learned so much from them. And you feel that you have bought, you've got more, more friends and family this side also. And women projects we have done in Kenya, everywhere you go, they want you to be part of them. And they're really grateful. And when we have children who have succeeded to go to university and come back and tell you, I got to where I am because of South Miss, that's the satisfaction you get. <laughs> So this was our um, our first project and it's going really well. Uh, then we went to Europe, to Bulgaria, and um, the, uh, the second project was called WeWash. It is Women Empowerment Through Water, Sanitation and Health, which began in June 2018 in rural areas of uh, Bulgaria, motivated by a need to mobilize women and girls from rural communities to build capacity and leadership skills and address adequately the immediate water and sanitation issues in their household and communities. On the ground, Women Water Leadership is working with the expert group Earth Forever. It is a non-profit organization. It's a partner of Women for Water Partnership and globally known expert in implementing similar projects in rural areas. While most cities in Eastern Europe have generally solved their water and sanitation needs, the rural areas are lagging behind big time. Local Soroptimis clubs like Plovdiv monitors and evaluates the project and at the same time, Earth Forever teaches these Soroptimis clubs how to manage a project like this so that they can copy it in their own community, which is definitely needed. 
The project applies learning by doing meth meth methodology uh, to train women and girls in knowledge about national water legislation and democratic procedures and develops women's skills to address relevant institutions to enforce their citizens' rights, human rights of access to clean drinking water and adequate sanitation serving as the entry point. So coming from a communist past in Bulgaria, it is still difficult for rural people to realize that one is not dependent on availability of connections based on origin, personal networks, or even bribe to enforce his or her rights provided by the national institutions. The real importance is to have good knowledge of one's rights and skills to address the responsibility and to address the responsible institutions according to the relevant procedures. That is for us normal, but for them, it's a big thing. Treatment, treatment plants or, or organic waste, inclusive of human uh, physiological waste, will take place locally by composting and reuse of the received safe product and made into subsistent agriculture for improved soil fertility and increased yields. So they'll get better crops. Again, the new knowledge and skills of safe composting made it possible for the rural women involved in this project to reduce dramatically the volume of their domestic waste and simultaneously to restore the fertility of the soil after the mass flooding they have this year. It was incredible. They lost absolutely everything because of the flooding, which happens, well, sometimes every other year. So this way, they will increase the volume of their crops next year. And hopefully, again, it will be OK to see the interviews of the women involved. Uh, it has been subtitled in Bulgaria. And uh, you can listen to them what the flooding did to their homes, to their crops, and to their families. Selo Christiano se namira na 10 km na jug Stara Zagora. To se namira v ramnina časti na naseljeno to mesto. Selo se zahrana od sobstveno do istočni, koji se namira na severozapadnje kraje na selotu, a pri prolivni deždove v doistočnika je v poniskata čast i togava ima nalibanje na kladenica. I za tova, osvem tova, jedin kanal, koji to idva od jezor Georgi Dmitrov, to minava v severni sklon, sešti od tam njegov pat ima prosmukanje. No tazi godina njegovoto na kanala je pod dopustimoto pod srednoto nivo, tako če od tam njema da ima nalivanje, no od porojnici daždove imaše. Osvem tova, mnogo kršče v severnem čas na selu to beha navodnjeni. Od skari da zahvaš. Tukaj sem rodena, tukaj sem umržena in se žive na selu, od kakto sem rodena, nemam. Sega ne znam, za navodnjenje to Какво да кажа, наистина много дъждове имаше, много валява тази година, обаче водите бяха много, наводниха се и дворови, и продукцията, която сме се засяли там, зеленчуци и неща. Много рядко хора, ние специално не можахме да вземем нищо. Ами чешмата течеше вода, а тя имало пукнато коляно, но ние не можем да разберем това всичко. Тук пред къщата ни беше пълно с вода, нагизнало всичко и всичко съхне. Оправи го четири дена, купахме тук голямо купане и голяма мъка. Има много какво да се желая. 
в общи линии това. Този проект, който в момента не ли разработваме, първо за културата на хората, как да ценим водата, как да я ползваме. Нали, да бъдем много пистелеви, да я ценим, да не разхищаваме. Освен това, хората да свикнат да се правят септични ями, всичко да бъде по-цивилизовано, да не е както сега. И трудно е да се желая да направим канализация, но ако има изчистени канапки, мръсната вода да се оттича където трябва, има отводнителни канали и така би се решил въпрос. Освен това научаваме много нови неща от този проект, от лекциите. Това е много полезно за хората. Радвам се, че има такава програма и можем да се възползваме от нея. Okay, now we go to our third project. It's in Sarawak and Saban on the island of Borneo in Malaysia. The indigenous people living in Malaysia and Borneo they face threats from climate change, deforestation, mining and continuous logging, which is polluting the air and valuable resources of drinking water and threatening the rich biodiversity of the area. The project in Sabah has been implemented and will be officially launched by the Chief Minister of Sapa on 17th of November, which is next weekend. We will give you more information on it later via the website and Facebook, and hopefully with a little video track. Heineken sponsored part of this project. But just like in Sapa, Deme Water and Leadership will also bring clean water to Long Tanit a village with a population of 300 people. This currently has no clean water, no electricity, no sanitation, and no medical clinic. It will also generate income for them from the current land. Five girls that the sortimist of Club Damasara, educated to be official welders, are receiving further management training so that they can be the project manager who supervises setup and maintain the rainwater harvesting system and the organic farming irrigation system that will be implemented in their village. They will be educated in organic farming so that they can train the village women. It's a wonderful project that will benefit another 120 women and girls in the village and what is so exciting is the excellent partnership between Soroptimist and local people. Avia is still one of the leading causes of death in under fives due to unsafe water. And by providing safe drinking water, the project will undoubtedly improve the health of the community. And the vegetable plots will produce income and healthy nutrition for all. Information about all those projects, those three that we introduced, you can find that on SI's website. And Marit will now tell you about our fourth project that we will start working on by the end of this year. And that is Indonesia. There is so much happening in our world that we might have forgotten that on the 28th of September this year, central Sulawesi, Indonesia was rocket, uh, rocked by a 7.5 magnet earthquake triggering a tsunami with waves of up to three meters high, landslides, widespread destruction and loss of thousands of lives. The most affected area was Dongala, Palu City and Sigi, with many villages completely wiped out, total destruction with irretrievable loss. Since then, there have been more than 614 aftershocks registered in Palu and the surrounding areas. As at 15th of October, the death toll had risen to over 2,000, with more than 5,000 feared uh, missing and more than 88,000 people displaced and areas totally cut off, according to the United Nations humanitarian agencies. SI Southwest Pacific has called for action and set up a special action fund 
A project team has been set up who will organize the work, where and how to focus and what to do. SI is partnering, partnering with Southwest Pacific in this action through the President's Appeal. And Women, Water and Leadership will not be involved in the emergency relief, but we will start a very constructive project. As we have Sroptimist in Indonesia, we will be allowed to start our project to help the women and girls in Sulawesi. We already have a project in Asia, and this will be our fourth project. But still, as I feel that this is of the utmost importance and we want to assist this disaster in a very poverty stricken area. Southwest Pacific and the two clubs, SI Jakarta and SI Keman in Indonesia will manage the project on rebuilding work in Sulawesi and Lombok. The project will consist of toilets, sanitation blocks, including, of course, vocational training for women, clean water and hygiene, vegetable gardens, also including training, and the women will be educated in how to implement and maintain this project so that it becomes theirs, they own it. Southwest Pacific itself will focus on an emergency fund for immediate needs. The SI President's Appeal will focus on Women Water Leadership Project and collect money for that. An agreement will, of course, be signed between Southwest Pacific and SI on that project. As I have given you now a lot of information on the current projects that we are running with Women Water and Leadership, it might be a nice time to ask questions if you have any questions on the projects before we continue on finance and all the other things. Okay, Marie, thank you. I've got some questions that have been typed up, so that's very handy. Thank you to those who are doing that. Uh, first of all, a comment from uh, Chris Knight saying thank you to the team here. It's wonderful to be able to have the opportunity to listen firsthand to the wonderful work that SI is doing through these amazing projects. And that she says that her club, SI Morton North, have been supporting the project through sales of jewellery and small gifts, stickers and waffles. And she says that water is vital to all life. And if women have access to clean water and sanitation, it changes everything for them and their community. So thank you, Chris uh, Knight, for that. Um, Marina has asked two questions. Um, first question, isn't there any opposition from men uh, to the projects? Um, no, not at all. Uh, specifically in Kenya uh, and also in Bulgaria, we have involved men. We 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 trained the women. Um, we have, uh, but I mean, as you know, in these sort of countries, women cannot do anything without the permission of men. So we had a conversation with the men, and they are the 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 biggest fans of these women, because really uh, they, uh, they support them, they help them dig, they, uh, they made the fence uh, together with the women, so the heavy work was done by them. And uh, they asked if they could go to the trainings so that they would know as well where to support the women. So um, we are involving men, um, it's we're aiming at the women, of course, to get them out of this poverty. And but wherever there are men, we involve them, and that works tremendously well. Thank you for that question because it's important. So, thank you, Marie. She did ask another question, and she asked the Bulgarian project: Are these Roma women? Uh, she knows a little bit about the country. There's a big difference big gap between Bulgarian women and Roma women. How do you and the club of uh, Plovdiv select the women in Bulgaria? Um, that is another really good question because the Roma women are very involved. Um, 
I mean, I can talk about this for, for hours because what we've done, we, we started with this project and the result was that they found out that the soil is so tremendously polluted um, and the women didn't know and no one ever told anyone. Uh, and the big pollution uh, goes to there are huge communities of Romas and uh, the Romas are always looked at as being sick and, and lazy. But now we found out that they are really sick and lazy because of the of the polluted water. Um, so we are uh, this earth forever and the group is working with the Romas. They have now uh, sorted um, it's uh, with another uh, partner. It's it's uh, one of the churches are involved uh, that they got clean water. Uh, with the Seroptimist, they had a big event on hand washing and uh, hygiene uh, for the Roma uh, women. And they are slowly getting to see that uh, they also can be involved and that they also can have little uh, vegetable plots because they don't have that. Because they, they, they're too, um, well, they're too sick, really. So um, the government is not very involved with the Romas. They don't want any, uh, they, they think they are a burden. But our organization and our group on, on the ground is really getting them into it. And uh, together with our partner, um, uh, at the moment we have a partner, uh, Girls Not Brides, and they will also come to Kuala Lumpur to the convention. We are involving the Romas. So thanks again for that question. It is an, an, an extension of this project, what we found out, and uh, which is working really well. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask um, a few questions about the, the Kenyan, and then I'm going to ask Renu if she would like to ask her question because she's got her hand up. So if you just bear with me for a minute, I'll just... Uh, um, there's a couple of questions around this uh, in Kenya. Can you ensure that the seeds they receive are not genetically modified? Uh, then there's another question along a similar vein. In Kenya, is the farming all organic? And what do they use for pesticides and what kind of seeds do they get and where from? Well, that is another good question. I mean, when we started, the women... Um, um, got a lot of, uh, you know, there were Chinese salesmen who came to the women and they said, well, we've got everything included here, uh, fertilizers, uh, pesticides and seeds, and you use it um, and you, you'll have the best crops. And of course, and it's cheap. And of course, the women believe that. Because we came in, as I told you, we started with an analyzing the ground, the, the soil. And we said, okay, we went to the University of Egerton, where uh, the head of the department is a seroptimist professor. And uh, they analyzed the soil and they said, okay, for this soil, and it's the whole surrounding, and also uh, it goes into Uganda and um, Rwanda, so we can extend this project. Uh, you have to use these different um, fertilizers and these different um, seeds. So they were taught the right seeds who are, it's all organic, uh, it's, it's uh, the best for the, for the soil, it is, um, it's not manipulated or modified. Uh, so uh, we specifically looked at that because the women have to continue. And in the, um, in the training at the university where they all went, they got training on, on finance, on uh, how to sell or marketing, on uh, how to store because they have nothing to store. They are now a cooperation. And together, the next step they do is they will build a storage in the right way with the help of the university um, to actually uh, sell their products at a later stage, not at a stage when, they are, when the products are very cheap, uh, but at a later stage when it's more expensive and they get more money. They also are told different products because they only knew uh, beans and maize. Now they have all sorts of, 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 of vegetables and they got also 
lessons on how to cook them and what was good for you. So uh, it's it's not only we give them seeds and they'll sort it out. No, it's it's they are trained trained on every step of the way. Wonderful. Thanks, thanks, Marit. Now, um, oh. Rena, you've got your hand up. Do you want to ask a question? Rena. No, okay. Uh, sometimes people press the button. Okay. The other um, question that's come. So thank you for those um, questions from Zareen and uh, Dixie about the uh, the seeds and the pesticides. Uh, the next question is from Anu. Uh, she says it's no, so nice to hear all this. Thanks. Uh, the question is how are the local governments being included, if at all? Yes, well, the local governments, uh, specifically in Malaysia uh, and in Kenya, but also through uh, Earth Forever in Bulgaria, they are involved. Uh, the, uh, for instance, if I take again the, the, the Kenyan project, uh, one of the soroptimists works for the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, they already have some experience with these sort of uh, project educational um, um, well, projects, and uh, they um, they are very involved. They gave all the knowledge they had, what they've done before. Uh, they are informed on what we do. Uh, they uh, they support the women on the ground. They support, uh, for instance, uh, they have a um, an area manager uh, that is uh, sort of uh, looking after the whole area. And he specifically got uh, from the ministry, got uh, noticed that he had to look after these women, support them, and uh, if they had any need that they uh, that they should know. So it is, we're working very nicely with uh, all these different partners. We have so many partners, that's why, uh, it's it's partners that give us knowledge, give us input, give us uh, um, all sorts of things. But uh, we monitor, we implement, uh, we have the women, and we got the credit. So it's it's working nicely. That leads on to a very uh, onto Ula's question. Um, she says, "Excellent projects. Hope that, that the PR from our side is good, so we get the visibility we deserve, and we've missed out on in the former SI projects." So Ula's asking, "What kind of um, visibility we'll get from this?" Well, that is another thing. Uh, we have um, because the other projects, and they were wonderful projects, but the credit went to the other organization, for instance, the Red Cross. Uh, what we are doing now is we're doing this. That is why we involve the four federations. That is why uh, uh, SI needs this, this project uh, to go to the outside world, to the UN, to the... the um, I have just been to Rome and to the FAO. I had a personal chat with the director of FAO. Just, and I said, listen, you have problems uh, getting uh, uh, food for 9.7 billion people in the future without water. We are women, we are water. And he said, well, how can you help us? How can you help us? We try to involve women, but apparently we're not doing it the right way. So uh, can we have a cooperation where we involve women, where we invest in women? Because everywhere I go to all the big, big meetings is we have to invest in women that is their only solution to implementing the SDGs it's amazing so this is the right time for us to promote to go to these people uh, at the SD, uh, the CSW now I already implemented some of our projects in sessions with other organizations we have had a research with the FAO with the ILO and we involved our project. We are now going, as Women for Water, going to uh, have a big, we are the co-presenters, which is a big thing at the World Water Forum, uh, at the World Water Week in Stockholm in August 2019. And there we will uh, be able to show that the subject is great. It is leave no one behind. And we can present 
women projects, involve the, uh, the youth, involve the indigenous women, because that is another thing. And together, we said we all have different um, goals and we all have different needs but we are living apart, but we are together. And there we will, again, have a lot of, uh, of visibility. So uh, thank you, Ulla, for that question. And uh, I think we only can, uh, can improve on our visibility with these projects. Okay, there are three other, and I think quick questions, uh, Marie, because of, uh, because of time, and yes. I can read them later. Um, Marina asks, on what basis will you do the follow-up in general or is, is there a schedule i'm not quite sure uh, i think i think we'll ask we'll answer that later with half days but we have we have uh, we have contracts we have monitoring set aside we have goals we have um we it, it is being organized and half days might uh, be able to talk about it a little bit later Okay, so um, Marina, she also asks, um, do you work with uh, Protoss, which is a Belgian NGO? They have a lot of water projects. Well, we uh, could work with a lot of uh, big organizations like Water Aids and Protoss, and, uh, but we specifically wanted to work with the little ones on the ground uh, who have the expertise and uh, join this optimist so that we would be uh, the, the ones who would uh, actually get the credit. Okay, so the, the, the last question is from Zarina. Uh, she's asking, can we get the expertise from SI when projects are implemented in our area? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we already got, for instance, for the Kenya project, we already got so many areas um, uh, that wanted to do the same thing and if we could do it. It's, uh, it's all, uh, it's all um, on paper, on, uh, it's, it's, uh, so it will be sent around uh, and you only have to ask for it. Great, thank you. Okay, we'll let you go on. And we'll, I'm sure there'll be more questions at the end. Uh, so please, people keep on um, typing them up in the question box because that's where I go back to. Okay, thank you, Marie. Keep on with the, the presentation. Okay. Yep. Uh, so thanks very much for these questions. They're really good, and it, it helps us also to think on on uh, on further webinars on what we have to put in there. Um, uh, before we continue, I would like to uh, to remind you that we will have a wonderful uh, SI convention in Kuala Lumpur on our doorstep. It will be July 2019. You can already reg register. The website is already uh, we're organizing. We have the most incredible, excellent top keynote speakers uh, from royalty to, to, to top experts. We also have workshop and one of the workshops we have is on the president's appeals. And um, I say appeals because the, the, the um, a convention, of course, is on uh, the work SI has done from 2015 to 2019. And uh, Yvonne has done the President's Appeal in Nepal, which had an incredible impact. We are working on women, water and leadership, and we will have a workshop where you can see even more, inf get more information uh, and more um, uh, knowledge about uh, how to continue in your own part of the world. Um, of course, we have to tell you on how we're financing this, these wonderful projects and how we will continue. And um, no one else is better to do that than Haftis. Thank you, Marit. Just like you say, you heard now about those three wonderful projects that we've already started. And the fourth, that is cooking in the oven. So now I'm going to tell you how we make those all happen because all projects they depend on the amount of money received from Sortemist. It's from you and your union or region or club members. We couldn't do anything without the money. Sortemist have been good in supporting the President's Appeal and the Quadrennial projects in the past. And just like uh, Ulla asked about our visibility and uh, Marit answered, before, when we were donating all those monies, millions and thousands, 
dollars, pounds. The other organization who was partnering with us, they got all the credit. But these projects that we are working on now, they're all short-term projects. So let's hope that the support will increase, as without your support, it will not be possible to finance all the projects aimed for, nor empower the women that are in dire need of our support. The amount donated by Sortemis through the federations, you can see that on the screen, it's around 160,000 pounds. And with Sortemis members around 73,000, it's about 2.2 pounds per member per year. That's not a lot of money, and we need more, much more. So uh, most of the money, they really come through large donations from fundraising events. As nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. We have received direct donations. That's a, and you see that on the screen, it's about 52,500 pounds that we have received. The largest one coming from the Sortemist Foundation of the Netherlands, where uh, they donated 50,000 euros. Their Dutch union, they are now encouraging their clubs to make donations to celebrate their union's 19th anniversary, that was last year. They want to support 90 women farmers in Kenya, and I believe they will succeed in doing that. There are other donations coming from like uh, SI Club Edmonton in Canada. I think Anna is now here in the webinar with us. They have done some fundraising. Then it's SI Club Connecticut, Sherland in the US. They sent us some money. And here on this screen, you can see uh, us re receiving 500 pounds from Cheshire, North Wales, and Wirral during the Stick Peace Convention last month. And hopefully, more donations will come for us to reach the President's Appeal goal of 350,000 for the women, water, and leadership. To increase the success of each project, it's important that a Sortemis club or union region is in place to ensure everything runs smoothly and to enhance communication between SI and the project on the ground. And those Sortemis that are there, they are the ones that are monitoring and doing the follow-up, making sure that the reports are there and they are the ones communicating with us and also our partners, just like Earth Forever in Bulgaria. They send uh, reports. They don't receive more money until they have sent reports of the progress. And the sort of means they are there to make sure that this is all correct and done nicely. Emphasis is on funding projects that are sustainable projects that can continue to thrive and be maintained by the women once the President's Appeal funding has finished. The President's Appeal offers an opportunity for sorotomists, you and me, to show others that we are indeed an international organization that works together for the best of women and to do the best for women. And it's a way to attract new members, so please use it. It is possible to donate to the President's Appeal Fund or to a specific project within the appeal. So if you want to donate to a specific project like Malaysia or Indonesia or Bulgaria or Kenya, just you have to remember to earmark it when you send the donations to your federation. And we will keep track of it. Sortemis can get further involved by advocating for the President's Appeal. They can organize fundraising and awareness raising events where they can make use of the communication material available on the members area on the SI website. Not all of you know how to use the website. So put it here on the screen for you to see. You log into sorptimistinternational.org and then you press, you can see here on the screen, the red triangle here that members, if you press on that, you get this screen that's here. And then to see uh, the President's Appeal uh, leaflet, logos, and all kinds of information. And just like this webinar, and also uh, the, pres the, the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation, the text, that's gonna go into this area, SI resources, for you to see. Besides donating to the President's Appeal, you can also buy the beautiful gold. I'm going to go one page back to show you that. You can see here on the screen this beautiful 
pin or pendant or necklace designed by Willy Marco. It's silver and it's gold plated or pl platinum plated silver. And then you have the one to the left that's designed by Hilary Laidler from England. And you can also buy that. If you need some information, you can see my email address here at the bottom of the page. I respond usually within the day, so don't hesitate to contact me, both for more information or if you want to buy the pins. We've got plenty of them and you wear them proudly. So to advocate for the President's Appeal, we need your assistance. We can do nothing without donations from club members, clubs and regions or unions. Many Sorptimists think that the President's Appeal is only to be mentioned on the 10th of December. And that specific day, they donate to the President's Appeal. But the President's Appeal, it is, goes on two years. It's not just for one year. So you can do that every day of the year and donate to it every day of the year. So please do that. And you can see here what is listed on the screen. And this is what you can find also on the uh, Sortimist International webpage. This is a design made by William Aku. And this is also on the website. You can, dis you can distribute it wherever you want to. And this drop there shows how we are doing, how much are we receiving in donations. So the drop will fill up up to 350,000 pounds and hopefully more than that so it's going to overflow that would be really nice because without the donations we cannot do anything together we need to make sure that members know about our important projects the president's appeal is only international project where certain is all over the world join hands together as the best of women who do the best for women so thank you so much for your commitment. And now we're gonna open up for questions again. Bet you have a lot to Oops. think about and ask. Okay, so we have one other question and that's from Renu. Um, in Poon, we have women who keep awake late at nights to collect water for homes, but no help from our government body. Could you give some suggestions on how we can help them? So maybe that's another project for women, water and leadership. If there is a project uh, that you want us to look at, send me an email because I've got all the files that you need so to see if the project fits into the criteria that we have for the project. So send me an email and I'll send you the forms you can fill in and we decide the President's Appeal Committee that has uh, representatives from each of the federations. We go through the applications and decide which projects are going to be supported by the President's Appeal. So please send me an email. Okay, thank you. I don't have any, any other questions on my list here. Um... I, I want to add a little bit to this because uh, on, on this, on the sort of mist, on the web page, we're also gonna have some ideas of how you can donate, what kind of, of fundraising you can do. So please look at it. Okay. And I made, um, I made a little um, very, very short uh, video of um, one and a half minute or something like that, uh, where I really asked the clubs and the unions and the regions to what they are doing for their uh, for the president's appeal, not only uh, to um, make them start doing something, but also uh, to report so that we can actually put on the website all the activities that have been have been done so to show the rest of the world that uh, it's not something that is uh, done uh, easily but that we are really involved uh, to get these women in an empowered position okay um, the question comes from Zareen how often do you plan to have such webinars you're going to have some more information in the future Well, uh, we um, we have, uh, as an SI board, we have changed uh, uh, 
Um, this webinar started with Yvonne. She uh, she started um, the leadership uh, committee, and uh, this this was a really really wonderful idea, and and a really um, it it really improved the leadership uh, thinking in our SI board. So uh, what we are doing now is uh, because uh, to our regret, Yvonne is falling off the perch. Um, she, we will uh, implement this into uh, into the board. We'll have a special director who will um, uh, who will uh, do this, and 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 with a group will organize this. So uh, we already have organized a director webinar on on what do you need to do as a director. We are uh, we'll have a a finance um, webinar to to show the people uh, what uh, what what it all involves, and um, an advocacy webinar on on the CSW, for instance. What are we doing at the CSW? How can we? Uh, um, improve our visibility. Uh, we already have sent in sessions uh, who can attend. Do you know any good speakers? These sort of things. And of course, we will have one on the um, on the convention. So um, maybe before the convention starts, we'll have another one to show you how things are going. Um, this um, group of people, we have changed that uh, in the constitution, uh, will work from January 17 to uh, 31st of December 2019, so we still have a whole year, um, and, um, and we will come back to you, but I cannot say if we have, uh, when exactly, maybe, maybe after the spring. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's, there's a, um... Heftus, could you put the slide back to your, which has your contact details on it, because somebody has asked for that, uh, and also two oh, people. Yeah. No, just just her with your email address on the bottom. Oh, uh, okay. if, you could, if you could do that for Renu. Um, and Marina asks, will there be a project in South America? And Valda has asked, are there any plans for water projects in Nepal? Yes, uh, South America, we have, um, um, we've worked hard to get a project there. Um, we are actually doing a project um, uh, with uh, Women Ambassadors for Water, it is called. Uh, we do this, um, we in this case is Women for Water Partnership and um, uh, BPW, Business Professional Women International. Um, as I am the president of SI, um, I joined them uh, and I helped them and we have a lot of contact with them. We uh, we try to get the Sroptimist involved, but uh, um, they didn't have the manpower or the women power to do that. So we do have a project and I, I see it myself as, as being part of the uh, uh, of, of, of this, um, the intention of uh, women, water and leadership. It is exactly what we what we're aiming at. And it's really um, to um, uh, to educate this, the, the, the people themselves. So uh, we wanted uh, and we've already done training also for the Sroptimist. Uh, Sroptimist, BPW, Women for Water Partnership and all women organizations uh, train them on the importance of water and what they can do, this is in Brazil, what they can do in Brazil uh, uh, to make awareness of the water issues because they have major issues. And we also had a lot of, uh, with the World Water Forum in Brazil uh, past um, last this year, we, uh, we also promoted this um, to the people available there. If I can add to this, uh, if there is a project in South America that you know of, then please send me an email. You can see my email address there on the screen, and I'll send you information about what the project is. Thank you. Uh, Lita, you had a question to ask. I just want to... Hello. Hello, Lita. Yeah, you had a question. Uh, regarding this water, it's really fascinating. 
because 2015 when we had our uh, flooding in uh, Chennai, 2016 the whole of uh, India got together and we got a big unit of clean and safe water in Chennai installed. And uh, the whole school is provided with clean water. Last year we came up and uh, distributed stainless steel water bottles to the whole school so that they can take it back. Uh, we would like to, I would like to know what you are doing in Sabah so that I can incorporate it here and also help in any way that we can out there in Sabah. Thank you very much. Well, what we do in Sabah is really um, um, a rainwater harvesting project uh, because uh, the villages don't get water. Uh, we had uh, we had a, a long talk with uh, Heineke. Heineke is a beer company, um, uh, and as you know, um, maybe um, if you want one liter of beer, you need uh, six liters of clean drinking water to actually produce it. So we talked to them and said, well, um, you need a lot of water, but so do the people on the ground. So uh, they supported this rainwater harvesting project. Uh, there is a lot of rain. It just has to be uh, filtered. They have long houses, which is wonderful to actually have uh, guttering. Um, I have a little book which I send around uh, um, in Southwest Pacific. Um, I don't know, um, I can still send it. I've got it uh, digital and I've got it on paper uh, where you can see how easy it is to, uh, to uh, have rainwater harvesting, to have tanks. Uh, the only thing afterwards, what you have to do is how to monitor the water, how to clean it, um, to clean the tanks regularly, and uh, how to uh, how to um, protect it. So um, that is really what we're doing uh, in Saba. Uh, we do a little bit more in um, um, in Tanjit because uh, there we have. Uh, the girls from the village who are educated, who are leading the project, they are real experts. They have been, um, uh, they are welding, uh, they have their welding diploma and uh, with um, ex excellence. And um, they have now a management uh, course where they uh, will uh, sort of lead the project. Uh, they will have from um, about two kilometers, well, yeah, two kilometers from the village. They will make a pipeline to the village um, to support them with water and to support their uh, vegetable plot or their vegetable area uh, for the women. And um, because it's logging, th this whole area is logged. You can hardly get to these villages. And the villages are uh, really blocked by the logging companies. They they just got in between the villages and 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 the real world. So you have to go through the logging groups uh, and and villages to get to these people. And those villages were actually living off the ground. The, the men were still hunting, and they can't hunt anymore. The women uh, lived from from the from the forest, and the for, forest is logged. So that is, we, we're doing more to educate them in a different way so they can uh, get income in, in a better way. And of course, they also get rainwater harvesting and, um, and sanitation. One of the things that's come through on the questions, Marit, is, um, is it possible to include a visit to the Malaysian project as a post or pre-conference convention tour in 2019? It might be a, an additional fundraiser. This is from Anne. Um, we could look at that. Uh, I think we have to, um, it's, it's a very, very remote area. And um, uh, I went there and it was, um, I'm very happy that I'm still here because the way it, you really go through the, there are no roads. Um, if it rains, it's absolutely impossible to get there. Um, uh, on the way back, uh, going up, I mean, I think these people, the, the, the chauffeur knew, uh, could drive it blind, which he did try on the way back because his window wipers weren't working. And um, it, it's, 
that is the only thing that uh, is holding me back of, of how to, unless we have the money to make an absolute um, road towards that. Um, but we are thinking of getting the people down to the, um, to the convention so they can, the people themselves can talk about it. Uh, and the girls, uh, but we're still thinking about it. And I'm, I'm still looking at, at, at what the possibilities are. Now I was I was fiddling around with things on the computer. So you you were asked a question about South America. You also asked whether there was going to be one in Nepal. I'm sorry, I I didn't concentrate at that moment. Did you answer that one? Is, is there any plans for yeah, a water? Well, at the moment uh, we have um, um, work, Women for Water has has worked with uh, Nepal and and your uh, President's Appeal by offering uh, services and because we have partners in in Nepal. Uh, at the moment, uh, we, we, we have been in contact with um, uh, Sharon and uh, at the moment we are, are not um, having anything uh, on the shelf to continue uh, with the water. We have proposed it, but it's, it's not coming about. Uh, can I add to this? Uh, we have an application from Nepal, but we uh, decided to have one project on its continent. So that was our aim in the beginning, and but now so now we have two actually in Asia, and Nepal would be the third one. So mm -hmm. if there are a lot of donations and we're gonna get receive enough money, we will definitely look at the one up, the application we have from Nepal. But there's nothing that's been decided on now because we want to make sure that the project we have already accepted and already uh, started working on that those can be finished. So it all depends on the donations received, how much and how many we can really work on. Mm -hmm. Do you have any concerns about donations? I mean, Cheryl's mentioned she thought the SWP was low, but that's, to me, that's in comparison to, in three, Southwest Pacific is 3% of the Seroptimus world, and it has to be seen in, presented in proportion to what other people are giving. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, donations are low, just to say that. Like I pointed out, it's 2.2 pounds per member mm -hmm. per year mm -hmm. that is, has been donated for the first year. And that is, of course, too low. And comparison with the project that we had as a, for the uh, quadrennial projects and with the President's appeal before, it is really uh, much lower. So let's hope it's going to pick up. At least these are very good projects, and this is what Sir Optimist they wanted. They wanted to have a Sir Optimist project so we can be seen and known outside of Sir Optimist. And these projects are very good, and they are really, I mean, we can be proud of them. So I'm hoping that we get more donations, but it doesn't just happen. This is for all of us to work on. This, and we, and we, also, we also need the federations to promote this. I mean, it's um, uh, of course there's one representative per federation, but it has to be really promoted uh, as, as a project, uh, not as uh, a theme. Uh, and that is another, that's another thing that, um, that I think would help a little bit. All right. Um, I'm just going to ask Marina if she had something else to say. She's got her hand up on the um, on the on my panel. Marina, did you have another question? No. Okay. Sometimes people bump the wrong the wrong thing. Okay. So I think um, President Marita and Heftis, we've um, come to the end, timed beautifully for for this webinar. Um, would you like to? wrap it up um, and we'll yeah. say good night well th for me it's good morning but <laughs> it's, uh, thank you very much for for joining us uh, this was really really great um i hope you will look at the videos in a, in a better way uh, from the website because you, uh, it is a youtube so everyone can download it and and show it uh, show it around. I hope you will be ambassadors for this uh, for this um, project, because I think um, we can we uh, going.
to the outside world, going to the big events and, and, and talking to uh, UN organizations and other organizations. You can only do that if you have something tangible in hand. And I think this project specifically, when as we are all, the whole world is focusing on the SDGs, the whole world at the moment is focusing on women because we are not on track with the SDGs and everyone is worried. So now suddenly they think if we invest in women, we'll get there. So I think it's our time. It's really the time that we can uh, can get, um, can be important and can be decision makers and can be agents of change. So uh, let's do this together and join hands. Thank you very much. Thanks Yvonne, thanks Haftis. Thanks all of you for being there. Thank you, Marit. Thank you. As you know, 10th of December is Human Rights Day, the day Sir Optimist show their support for the International President's Appeal. Through the 2017-2019 Women, Water and Leadership Appeal, we are working with women and girls in Kenya, Bulgaria, Malaysia and Indonesia empowering women and helping to build strong, resilient and sustainable communities. We are almost halfway to our goal of raising £350,000. Let us know how you are showing your support. Let us know what you are doing on the 10th of December, your activities, your events. Share your President's Appeal activities with us on social media and use the hashtag WWLSoroptimist. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.